Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and if you know anything about me or my channel, you know that I love cyberpunk. It's probably one of my top three favorite genres, going from Shadowrun, Blade Runner, all kinds of different things. If it's cyberpunk, I'm generally a big fan of it. And I also realized I hadn't had any kind of card game um, on the channel in a while, and I found something that released today on Steam that might be able to take care of two of those itches with one scratch. This is System Crash, guys. A card-based cyberpunk game that actually has a story campaign involved in it. When, and that really intrigued me that we're actually going to get a story, which you don't see in a whole lot of card games, at least on the computer. So let's go ahead and jump in this and see how far the rabbit hole goes. Unknown user. Looks like we have to create a profile. User. Oh, do we get to choose what we look like? Yeah, we do. That's cool. Very similar to the uh, Hairbrain Scheme Shadowrun games then. Wonder how much variation we're going to get. Looks like quite a bit. We got... these. All of these folks would make good deckers, street samurais, corporate thugs, the whole bit. Nice variety. And that looks to be all of it. Let's go ahead and go with this guy, because it's, it's the closest to my little shy guy avatar. User 001. Let's do this. Wretched... One. Seems like a good handle. Choose module. Neon Noir. And it doesn't look like we can choose anything else, so I guess this is the main story. What we got? The San Angeles sprawl rises up around you. Neon lit towers thrusting through smog to rake the night sky. You take a breath, almost smiling at the foul, familiar taste of the air. It's been more than a year since you were on the west coast, and you're glad to be done with Europe and its miserable winters. The assassins didn't help either. The Berlin job, the one Jackson promised would be a piece of cake, was anything but. The situation got real messy, real fast. You left Berlin in a hurry, assassins hot on your tail. If you'd known you would be tangling with the syndicate, you'd never have accepted his offer. No use holding a grudge though, Jackson died in Amsterdam. Bounty hunters ambushed your team in a dingy little cafe, Jackson and Summers torn apart in the first barrage of gunfire. He barely made it out alive. You had to pay a black market body shop a fortune to graft you a new hand to replace the one you lost to that grenade. A rush job. The color doesn't quite match. The team split up after Amsterdam, figuring that traveling alone would be less conspicuous. Six months you moved around the globe, staying one step ahead of syndicate hunters. Six months before you were satisfied that they'd lost the trail. And now you're back in your own stomping, your old stomping ground, back in San Anne. First order of business was getting a new console. You abandoned yours in Amsterdam. And the kind of console you need, well, they don't sell those at the mall. Black market cyberware ain't cheap, and you'd burn most of your creds dodging hired killers. A bank loan was out of the question. A background check would poke holes in your fake ID real quick. That left only one option. A loan shark. Miriam's ruthless. But hers were the only terms you could stomach. She agreed to lend you the 5k you needed for a new hijati, on condition that you paid back 10. Ugh. You had little choice. Can't buy a console without credits, and you can't earn credits without a console. If you don't pay back the debt, Miriam will send her goons to collect your liver. And the rest of your organs, whatever they can sell to the chop shop. You've got 30 days. Ugh. Well, that's not... Incoming call, Jojo. Yo, yo! You still looking for work? Jojo's in the market for a runner he can rely on, and you were the first one he thought of. Sure, I could do with some credits. Little bit of corporate espionage and sabotage, you know, the usual dreck. Some bigwig upside is real interested in that new port deal. You heard about that? Can't say that I have. Man, you gotta pay more attention. The city wants to upgrade the port, improve efficiency, whatever. They're looking to plow some serious credits into it. 
bunch of corps are bidding on the contract. Competition's pretty f fierce. At least, that's what the talking heads on the evening news say. Smells like a chance to do some business to me. Opportunity, man. It's everywhere. If you're paying attention. Yeah, well, that's why I have you, right? You sniff it out, I'll bring it in. It's a beautiful friendship, really. <laughs> yeah, sure. Friendship. Standard cut applies. 30% finder's fee for Jojo, 70% for you. We're on a deadline here, though. City Council starts reviewing bids in two weeks. Klein wants to ensure that his is the only real contender. You in? I'm in. So where do we start? Portmaster Limited. They've got the current contract for port maintenance. City's making them bid to renew, so it can't have been that happy with the service. Should be hard to tip the scales even further. Break into their offices. Grab whatever data you can. Let's see how they run their operation. On it. And Jojo disconnects. That's cool. I like it. It's all just computer interface. Completing missions will advance the storyline and award you, award you with new cards and credits. Before you can build custom decks, I like the play on words there, you will need to unlock the black market, where runners go to trade illicit software and gear and to find new contracts. To unlock the black market, complete the first mission. Alright. Objective, steal any data you can from Portmaster Limited, pay Miriam back 10k credits in 30 days. Uh, the Debt Miriam Story Mission. And the only other thing, Portmaster Snooping. So that must be, so that's the Lone Shark. This is our first mission. I don't think we should probably go talk to the Lone Shark first if we don't have the money. They normally frown on that kind of practice. So let's go ahead and try this and just jump right in. Break into the Portmaster Limited Bay offices, gain access to their system, and copy any financial records you can find. Credits, 100 credits. Well, JoJo didn't get much to either, if that's the cut. A pre-selected deck will be used for this mission. So this is the tutorial. Welcome to your first run. The premise is simple. You have a mission to accomplish, an objective. Objective points represent your progress toward that objective. Your opponent will, of course, try to stop you. Portmaster Security. Aren't you a charming looking fellow? These are player information displays. PIDs for short. The PID tracks useful information such as how many credits the runner and his opponent has. As well as how many cards are in their hand, their deck, and their archive. Alright. But the most important value tracked by the PID is each side's objective point score. As the runner and his opponent score objective points, their OP bar will fill up. The first one to reach their OP target value is the victor. Each side starts the run with a deck of at least 40 randomly shuffled cards. These cards represent the agents, events, modifiers, and support cards that each side will use to try to achieve their objective. Drawing Cards Before the run begins, each player draws a starting hand of 6 cards from their deck. If you aren't happy with your starting hand, you have the option to redraw it, and you may redraw up to 2 times. So, what I gathered from that Credits, I think, uh, I'm comparison, or comparing to Magic the Gathering, I think credits would be mana, objective points or victory points, obviously. Um, we got your deck, the archive would be the graveyard, and how many cards are in your current hand. So let's look at the cards here. Lobby security. Limitless, no limit to number of copies in deck. Corp. And I think on the top left hand we have how many credits it costs to uh, use the card. Maybe the shield is defense, the bullets are offense, and the heart is their health. I'm going to need to see some ID, sir. Body armor. Target allied non-mech agent gains armor plus two. Deals six damage to a target agent assault. Series D, target allied non-mech agent, or target allied non-mech agent gains attack plus two. Take cover, agents you control gain armor plus one. Neomonger, limitless. The Neomongers breathe in the city lights and breathe out chaos. Ooh, I like that. 
Uh, let's go ahead and keep this hand. We've got two guys and a lot of equipment. Portmaster Security chose to keep their starting hand. You chose to keep your starting hand, and you play first. This is the command interface. Through it, you manage your forces, monitor your opponent's moves, and attempt to achieve your run's objective. The screen is split into two halves. The top half displays your opponent's forces, and the bottom half of the screen displays your own forces. Each player has a limited number of command slots for bringing cards into play. The front row of command slots are for agents, so it looks like we can summon a max of four. The back row of command slots are for support cards. Modifier cards are played targeting agents in play. Each agent has three slots for beneficial modifiers and three for harmful. In some runs, one or both sides will start with special condition cards in play. If a condition card is in play, hover your mouse over it to see a description of how it changes the nature of a run. In order to bring cards into play, they will need to be played from your hand. During a player's draw phase, they will automatically draw one card from their deck and place it into their hand. The exception to this is during the first round of play. The player who plays first draws zero cards, while the second player draws one card as normal. During a player's resource phase, their credit pool will automatically increase by one, up to a maximum of ten credits. To play a card, a player must have enough credits in their credit pool to pay its costs. At the start of each player's turn, their credit pool is refreshed, and spent credits replenishing themselves. Ah! During a player's main phase, they can play any number of cards from their hand, so as long as they can afford to pay the credit cost of that card. In addition to credit cost, agent and support cards must be played into an open command slot. Modifier cards can only be played on agents in play with an open modifier slot. Once you've played all the cards you wish to play, can't afford, press the continue button or hit space to end the main phase and move on to the combat phase. So we only have one credit, unfortunately. Um, there's nothing... Oh! We can play the Neon Monger. Okay. Let's go ahead and set him right there. You've played an Agent card. Agents have a number of stats that can have positive and negative modifiers played into their modifier slots. So buffs and debuffs. Agents come into play exhausted unless they have haste. Exhausted agents will ready at the start of their controllers next turn. So they come into battle tapped. Okay. I like it. Pretty, very simple so far. Since you have no active agents in play to attack with, the combat phase is skipped. During the discard phase, if a player has more than 10 cards in their hand, they must discard down to 10 cards. So, Portmaster is going... Innocent Bystander. Just caught in the crossfire. Hmm. Okie doke. And I have... Ah, I see, I see. Well, we could always, we could send out lobby security, or we could buff up our guy here. I'll tell you what, let's, um... And that's take cover. Agents you control gain armor plus one. Let's go ahead and play this one. And... I think, yeah, we should be able to do that. I'm hoping. There we go. Just have to hit the play bu button. And that gives us one credit left. And now he's all gunned up and armored up. Which gives him an attack of five and an armor of two right now. During a player's combat phase, each agent that player controls will automatically attack. Agents that are stunned or exhausted cannot attack. If there is an enemy agent in the opposing slot, the attacker will deal combat damage to it equal to the attacker's attack strength. If the attacker is unopposed in combat, it will instead score OP for its controller equal to its attack strength. Okay. So it's like Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Magic when you're directly attacking life pools. At the end of the combat phase, all destroyed agents will be removed from combat and sent to their owner's archive, along with any modifiers they had. Interesting. Oh, here's more Portmaster security. 
Um, let's go ahead and summon. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and play lobby security right there. And we are going to use, I like how it's flashing to let you know what cards you can afford. Deal six damage to the target agent. So they have three points left and the innocent bystander is about to bite the big one. And they're both tapped. Oh, he played a debuff card. Interesting. Now what do we got here? Agents you control gain attack plus one. Agents you control gain armor plus one. So let's go ahead and start buffing our guys. You've played a support card. Support cards are potent, but have a limited duration. At the start of a player's turn, their support cards will lose one duration. When a support card's duration drops to zero, it is destroyed. So it's three turns. Good to know. What are you gonna do? Holy crap! Lots of agents everywhere! That's okay. Looks like we have Maddox. Hacking 2. At the start of your turn, you gain 2 OP. Let's do that. And we have 3. And I didn't see... We have Zeke, who's an Anarch. Zeke's got your back. And they're tapped as well, so... Hopefully they don't have any more agents. Oh, they do. <laughs> Lots of agents. Deal six damage to target agent. Who'd you hit? Oh, goodbye, Bob. What do we have here? Deal six damage to a target. Um, I guess we could do that. So let's do that to lobby security. Because of the armor and such. And agents you control... Let's go ahead and... Does that double armor? I think it does, actually. Zero. Now, he actually gained... See, so he gained some objective points there, which is interesting. But we gained some, too, and we only need ten. Now, that's the body armor, right? Well, let's go ahead and hand that off actually to Maddox, because Maddox is more of a defensive-based character. So armor of three, which should negate uh, this guy's attack power. Now, I wonder if we can actually move these guys to another section to kind of counteract... That's a strong possibility. Let's actually check and see if we can do that. Well, never mind, we don't have to. So, I don't think we can. Maybe there's a card that'll allow us to do it, so we need to be very, very careful there. I think it might be all over but the crying. For the security folks, at least. The next turn will win. And you can't, looks like you can't dispel anyone. There we go. More, like all security guards. More innocent bystanders. Not their day. Got it. Victory! And we got our 100 credits. I'm really liking this, guys. Click to reveal Bronze Award. Lewis, criminal. When Lewis comes into play, search your deck for an implant, console, or chem card and put it into your hand. Richard, hacking two. At the start of your turn, gain two OP. 
And he actually has some attack power. Finding your feet. Let's see what Jojo has to say. Good job. Security give you any trouble? Nah, piece of cake. Good, good. That's what Jojo likes to hear. Nice and clean. That data you pulled is solid. Client had a look. Says it's pretty obvious why the city wants to dump their asses. Too long sucking government teeth. Too long without any real competition. Management is bloated and costs are bloated. Client wants you to bump up those costs even further, just to make absolutely sure. Portmaster uses a transport subcontractor, Euphrate. Break into their offices and upload the doctored files JoJo's sending. They're adjusting cost schedules. Euphrate will pass on the increased cost to Portmaster. Portmaster will fold those costs into their port bid. And the city will find their offer less than attractive. Nice. You let me know when the files are uploaded. Upcut. Okay, we got. We're popular today. Incoming call nil. Your comm link opens to show a young man with bleached hair smirking at you. Hey, loser. How's tricks? I'm actually busy right now, nil. Yeah, I don't really care. I'm just making conversation, man. Listen, I got to get my gig, but you said you wanted in on the next tournament, right? Arena champion. Yes. Killer. We're setting up one now. Getting some wicked buzz. Lots of excitement. Plenty of big names eager to sign up. I know you're not in the big leagues, but you could probably make a few creds. I'll send you the cords and a registration pass, but you might want to get in some practice first. Don't want to embarrass yourself, do you? Nil, you're a... Nil looks back over his shoulder. In the background, you hear a woman giggling. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't get that. Look, I gotta go. Business. You stay frosty, champ. I'll check you at the arena. The connection stops. New tournaments unlocked in Neon Arena. As your card collection grows, try out new deck strategies to counter the strengths and exploit the weaknesses of the opponents you will face. To experiment with different cards, visit the black market. So we got the arena. Wow, okay. Let's check the black market real quick. From this screen, you can browse your cards, build custom decks, and trade with the black market. Hover your mouse over any card to view a detailed description of it and right click on any card to trade. This list shows you available decks. Click one to edit it and alternatively click new deck to create a deck from scratch. You can delete a deck by clicking X next to its name. Nice, we got like a huge variety of cards to choose from. This is going to be fun guys. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and end the episode here. We got our tutorial mission out of the way, and I think the real fun's going to begin. We've got 1,100 credits, and we are... <laughs> we just got a little less than 9,000 more to go to pay off our loan shark, but I'm sure complications are going to arise. Hope you guys have been enjoying it. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. I will see you next time. Later days, everyone.